Hey everybody, it's Coach Mike. Um, today I'm going to cover low intensity minimalist training for gains. Um, so this basically this goes over um, whether low intensity minimalist training uh, is enough to reap some of the benefits of res resistance training. So basically gaining muscle. Um, in this, a quick summary of it and then I'll go into some details. Uh, they found that even a few low intensity sets per week can have a positive effect on fitness, strength, and muscle mass. And for you, it just means that if you're a beginner or work with people who do not have experience with resistance training, even do a few low intensity sets of resistance training per week can be a great way to start your resistance training journey. Um, they also looked at how resistance training compares to aerobic training for managing type 2 diabetes uh, with resistance training resulting in a better glycemic control than aerobic training. So that has something to do with diabetes. That's another article, um, but just a quick glimpse of that one. If you do have type 2 diabetes or type 1, um, there was a study that researched that and that resistance training resulted in a better glycemic control than aerobic training. So that's something to think about, um, talk to your doctor about, and all that stuff. Uh, hey, shush. Uh, when combined with aerobic exercise, the benefits can be even more substantial. So showing that a combination of both aerobic and resistance training can be wonders uh, for health and longevity. Um, it's not all about gains in this article. It's about uh, just general health, physical health, mental health. Um, so depending on the health outcome, so as little as 30 to 60 minutes of resistance training per week can make a significant impact. And we have even looked at how, a, or they even looked at how a few hard sets per week can lead to strength and hypertrophy gains in advanced trainees, even though, even those who are competitive strength athletes. Um, the benefits of resistance resistance go beyond physical health, as it contributes to better body composition, bone health, mobility, particularly in older adults, and it can also enhance cognitive function and memory, uh, reduce psychological symptoms, and boost overall well-being. So that sounds all great stuff, all good things. Um, and there's where this, uh, let's see, where's lower dosage? All right, so the main question here is, um, is lower dosage or low intensity resistance training effective to improve physical fitness? So let's kind of go into that. It's kind of a recap of what the question is. Um, so the objective of the review was not just about getting fit or gaining muscle, uh, but rather about improving overall health, so longevity, um, and well-being in order to make resistance training more accessible and appealing to a broader audience. So we're trying to pull in people who don't have time um, to go and be in the gym for two hours a day, four or five times a week. Um, we're trying to prove that just going to the gym or doing resistance training at home can help, even if you do it two to three times per week. And we'll go into that here. Actually, I won't even get into that yet. Um, so. So based on the literature that they found, uh, they discussed in the review, it seems that a potential sweet spot for the minimal dose resistance training, resistance training frequency, uh, so how often resistance training, is around two to three times per week. Uh, multiple sessions can be more effective than fewer, especially when trying to um, seek out more, uh, a few more gains, but two to three sessions per week seems to be more than enough to, in order to reap a lot of the benefits associated with resistance training. Uh, some studies suggest that meaningful strength gains can even happen with just one weekly resistance training session, with as low as 20 minutes per week being enough to uh, see meaningful strength increases for as long as a year. Um, so when you do that once per week, and say you do do it for 20 minutes, I mean that's a focused 20 minutes of that particular uh, workout or that focus of that um, for that day. Um, you can't be like resting the whole time and going back and forth between uh, muscles, like 20 minutes is go. So make sure if you do less time, you're focused during that time, make it valuable. Um, as far as repetition schemes and sets, uh, the authors note that the classic recommendation of three to four sets of anywhere between eight and 12 reps per exercise has been a fitness staple, uh, mostly given its practicality, pretty easy to remember. Um, and those eight to 12 reps are a lower intensity and then something if you did like a seven sets of two to three reps or five by five. Um, however, it's not a strict rule or a set such repetition range configuration that science has determined to be better than others. That's just easiest for people to remember to do, um, especially when it comes to technique wise. We typically do recommend three to four sets of like eight to 12 or eight to 15 reps, depending on how um, 
new they are to the tra to training or just the, to kind of minimize uh, bad technique, we kind of focus on technique during those uh, higher volume, lower weight type of uh, workouts and exercises. Um, given the current literature, it's totally fine to leave a few reps in the tank if you're just someone who is just starting the resistance training journey, especially if you're not looking to get maximum jacked and strong. Um, so what they're saying here is a lot of times they always argue about going to failure, getting to that last rep where you can barely get in all that stuff um, in order to make the most of your gains. And that is true to a point, but if you are new to training, um, you actually don't have to be super sore going, coming right out of the workout or even the next day or two in order to reap some benefits. Um, so if you leave a few in a tank, so say you're doing lighter weight, say you're doing 12 reps and you did 95 pounds on the bench, um, and it was easy. Um, you can do that for four or five sets, but leave it at that, and you'll still reap some benefit from it. Um, until next time, then you can go up in weight. Um, patience is key when it comes to resistance training and recovery, so uh, you don't always have to go to failure. Because sometimes failure does scare people. Um, that's just human. Um, and it's uncomfortable. In order to get under a bar, uh, I guess you could call it, some people have a fear of failing under something. Um, that just comes with experience. <laughs> and so you don't have to go to that extreme in order to reap some of these benefits is what they're saying. Uh, another previous study they reviewed uh, found that any amount of resistance training versus performing no resistance training was enough to lower the risk of an all-cause mentality by 15%. Um, if that's another fear of yours, is dying before your time. Um, resistance training will help reduce the low, uh, reduce uh, the risk of that by 15%. So, how can you apply these findings uh, for resistance training beginners and especially those wary of intense workouts? Like I explained, two to three sessions per week with one to three sets per exercise at roughly six to 20 reps. Leaving around five to six repetitions in the tank can be a great way to start your journey towards making health and muscle gains. I'll copy that text into the uh, video info and you can just so you can see that visually. Actually, maybe I'll put it on the screen here somewhere if, I'm, if I got the skills to do that. Um, you also do not need to overly worry about using free weights or machines as previous research has shown that both can be equally effective at increasing muscle mass and strength. Strength, uh, find exercises that you enjoy doing. So exercises and workouts, type of workouts, type of activity, all those things. Find the one you like to do um, and it'll allow you to hit all the muscles in your body. Prioritizing compound exercises that hit multiple muscle groups at once. Um, we like to focus on those just because it's doing a lot of work and connection between all the big major joints of your body um, gets you a little bit more stable when it comes to um, balance and stuff like that. So it's always good to do free weights. It's good to do machines. It's good to do single joint exercises where it's just a bicep curl and you're only moving at this joint here. Um, but it's also good to do a dumbbell press where you're doing shoulders, elbows here. Um, so stuff like that. You want to mix it up for sure. Um, that's kind of it. Kind of sped through that, but we'll see uh, if anyone makes it to the end of the video. Um, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Listen. Talk to y'all later. Push my count.